Hello and welcome to another edition of the Cemetery Podcast. This is the third and final preview edition before we start the actual shows, which will begin on January the 7th. However, since 2020 is coming to a close, and just like a lot of programs and things that you've seen this year, we're going to kind of do a little bit of year in review because we don't actually always get all the things up on the website or on the social media that we actually do for the year. So, here we go. We're going to run back through chronologically all the places that we visited, what was there, some of the things that you might be able to see if you visit there, and uh, you know some of the reasons why you should visit these places. First of all, we started out the year actually on January 1st. My partner, Charlotte Graves, um, she lives in Claremont County, Ohio, and she went to a nearby cemetery uh, near her, Green Mound Cemetery in New Richmond, Ohio, to shoot a little bit of Christmas shots, and that's how we started the year off. Um, right after that, we uh, became involved with the Colerain Township Historical Society, and had COVID not ran rampant, we would have been more involved with them. But as a result, we had went up to the uh, Beavis Cedar Grove Cemetery, which was in Colerain Township, which later led to a couple other visits, uh, visits in Colerain Township, specifically the uh, Compton Cemetery for part of a project we were getting involved with the uh, Colerain Historical Society and the Colerain Township government who was going to do work to the cemeteries. We visited a couple there and uh, that was quite interesting. Things were found, things that we didn't expect. Also in January, there was a day where, um, for those of you that may or may not know, we are in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is, uh, I live about 10 minutes away from Spring Grove Cemetery, which is one of the big rural garden park cemeteries around the country. And it's, uh, it was one of those mornings that I woke up and it was super foggy. So I shot out the door and uh, got down there and shot some pictures of the Dexter Mausoleum. And many of you know the Dexter Mausoleum is very famous, not just in Cincinnati, but around the world. It's often referred to as Dracula's Castle. So I had to catch some Dracula's Castle on a foggy winter morning. Now, as we rolled into the second month of 2020, February, uh, there was only two shoots that I was involved in. Actually, one of them was a local shoot for the Potter's Field in Cincinnati, which for those of you who are in Cincinnati, it's located on uh, Gurley Road, but it is a very large old um, Potter's Field, the original one from city of Cincinnati. And uh, we went up there, we hadn't been there in a couple years, and I was curious if there was anything any different and or if it'd be easier to see some of the graves since it was winter time. And the case was not. I saw the same things pretty much that I saw years ago. No one taking care of it, and the city of Cincinnati just allows this cemetery to be overgrown. That's how they view as taking care of it. Um, the other shoot that I did in February was in Clark County, Ohio. I did that with uh, Wendy Everett from the Graveyard Gals. And we were up there, this was actually the day of the Super Bowl, and we were uh, visiting the town of Enon. We went to Enon Cemetery, Enon Mound, which was very cool. And then we went to uh, Springfield, Ohio, where we went to a few smaller cemeteries, but most importantly, we went to Ferncliff, which is the big rural garden park cemetery that's located in Springfield. That was really a good time. And to be perfectly honest with you folks, I was really running up against the kickoff for the game and I was getting ready to pull onto the, one of the highways in Ohio and I saw a sign that said Simon Kenton Urbana 15 miles away or I could have turned south to head to my friend's house to watch the Super Bowl and I had to contemplate for several minutes before I debated whether I'd miss the beginning of the Super Bowl to catch a famous grave that's how much of a grave hunter I have become over the years but thanks to Wendy, we had a really good time that day, and we got a lot of really good shoots. The morning started off really cold, but it turned it out to be a really nice day, and uh, we got some great shots at some fun places. Now, March started off like several other months. We, um, we live in, as I said, we're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, which is Hamilton County. Butler County, Ohio is the county just to our north. So there were a couple of cemeteries that we had 
on our short list of ones we wanted. So we tracked those down and were able to get a hold of those. Also, we revisited a couple of cemeteries that um, we had we had been to before, but there actually was a few famous people there that we had missed, or at least regionally famous people. We also uh, did the same thing for Claremont County uh, a couple of, about a week later, actually. Um, same kind of situation. Claremont County is the county directly to the east of Hamilton County, so we uh, shot after two cemeteries that were on our short list. March was wrapped up by a pretty good trip. It was actually... Uh, a trip we took to Michigan. We were in Michigan for four days, and we were traveling throughout uh, Grand Rapids, uh, Detroit, and several of the other cities in Michigan. We were targeting a variety of famous graves to include the Fords, um, also uh, numerous people that we were after, you know, we, we were calling the Michigan top 10, people like Bo Schembechler. We had several uh, governors we went after. And the best thing about it is, if you all remember, COVID restrictions went into play at the beginning of March. Well, we were actually going to go and try to get President Gerald Ford's grave. And because that was a federal facility, it was shut down. But believe it or not, and thankful to them, the nonprofit organization that runs the Ford Museum actually allowed us to have exclusive... Uh, access to be able to visit the president's grave so it was pretty nice and again i want to thank the uh people at the uh at the 38 commission who allowed us to have exclusive access to shoot president ford's grave in a time when other people were just not allowed so thanks a lot but i have to say one of my favorite things that happened while we were on the michigan trip we went after george papard now, many of you know George Papard from things like Breakfast, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and uh, he was also known as Hannibal on the A-Team. Well, this particular cemetery I went to was locked up because of the virus, and I could see where George's grave was, but I couldn't easily get to it from the entrance. But his grave is near the back entrance. So I thought, I'm going to have to go ahead and take an adventure. So I waited until there was no traffic coming down the street. I hopped the fence. S snuck my way down towards his grave. I was able to get some good shots of the grave, and then I was able to hop the fence and get back into the car and escape without anybody catching me. And you know the good thing about that was? I love it when a plan comes together. I would like to invite you all to check out a friend of mine, Tracy Rylands, who does an amazing website called Adventures in Cemetery Hopping. She has visited around the country dozens of states and she writes extensive articles and does photography as well. Be sure again to check out her website at adventuresincemeteryhopping.com. All right, so as we rolled into April, I did a couple of local shoots. I also uh, went on a couple of trips with my friend Bull. Some of you from the website may know exactly who he is. I travel with him as well as Charlotte, who's my normal traveling partner. Um, he actually is from Northern Ohio, so often we do things back and forth. And that was one of those kind of trips. We went to Canton, Ohio, and we went to visit uh, President McKinley's grave. And uh, we also went to uh, visit the grave of legendary football coach, uh, Paul Brown. Um, the one thing that was strange is we went to the West Lawn Cemetery in Canton, Ohio, but it was closed for COVID. It is one of only three cemeteries that I encountered that were closed for COVID the entire year. But while the COVID was raging, April went on and we were doing a lot of local stuff, finding some historical stuff, as well as famous people around Cincinnati. We were really targeting very specific famous people. Throughout the year, there's going to be a several shoots that I'm going to glaze over, and that's probably why, because unless you're from Cincinnati, some of these people may or may not matter to you. But there was a lot of that we did this year, filling holes. Several of those shoots we referred to as the COVID Cincinnati shoots. Now, another thing interesting that happened in April was that we had a tornado in the town where I'm from, right outside of Cincinnati. So I decided to uh, travel to the local cemetery 
and see what kind of damage was there. Crazy stuff was there. The roof was blown off of the building. Uh, several of the trees were down, but they were in opposite directions. And that's usually indicative of a tornado. So uh, I actually posted some of my video online, and I was actually uh, told that the National Weather Service checked out my video and actually sent somebody to here to check out my town to see if it was straight line winds or a tornado, specifically because of what they saw in my video. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now as we rolled on to May, there was a lot of things that happened in May. Uh, first off, Bull and I went, we went on a trip that was gonna be going to Marietta, Ohio. Uh, we traveled along 52 along the river and stopped in a lot of places. And the irony is, is that we never made it to Marietta. So that trip is called the Everything But Marietta trip. And we stopped and saw a lot of things there. Uh, some famous people, some interesting stuff like the grave of Bob Evans. And uh, we actually went to some historical sites. We went to the home of the Mothman. It was an insane trip, really. It was all kinds of things happening except what we expected to happen. Also, uh, later on in the month, I went to visit one of my local cemeteries, the Wesleyan Cemetery, where I found some damage on one of the old tabletop graves, which was really pathetic. Turns out that it was only chalk drawings on the grave, but still, that does damage. I actually put a video out earlier in the year where I was using a lot of colorful language, and I don't regret a word of it. Okay, two more trips that took place with Bull and I in May. First off, we went to Akron, Ohio. We visited uh, four cemeteries up there. Uh, some of them were pretty cool, but the most importantly, we visited uh, the Glendale Cemetery, which is another one of the rural uh, garden park cemeteries. That place was really cool. I'm going to tell you, if you live anywhere near Akron, you definitely need to go to Glendale. It is one of those places that you need to stop. It's also home of the Sebrings, the people that uh, created the Firestone Tire Company. It has a mausoleum row that is to die for. Ha! Yeah, I had to get that pun in. Anyway, it was really a place that needed to be uh, seen. So if you're in the area, I highly suggest Glendale in Akron, Ohio. Another trip that we did uh, a week later, actually, was we went to Pikeville, Kentucky. In Pikeville, Kentucky, we were trace chasing down, that is, the second half of the Hatfield and McCoys. We had uh, the Hatfields from a couple of years ago, so we were chasing down the McCoys this time. So we were traveling around and through out, back and forth of the Pikeville-McCoy Trail, where they have cabins and the cemeteries, all kinds of interesting stuff. We wrapped up the month by doing one of our annual Memorial Day treks where we go somewhere, somehow, to another city to celebrate and see what goes on Memorial Day there. We chose Kentucky, and this year we kind of chose Central Kentucky. We made our way over uh, several days traveling between Frankfurt, Lexington, and Louisville, and some of the cities in, in between. We had uh, been to most of those cities once or twice before, but there's always something to learn, something different going on on Memorial Day. We encountered a lot of stuff. We chased several uh, famous graves like D.W. Griffith and a few other people. So it was a very interesting trip. It was a fun trip, and we encountered a lot of weather and a lot of stuff. The first half of the year, wrapping up in June, involved a couple of interesting shoots, fun shoots. Um, at the beginning of June, I actually took my son to the Pioneer Cemetery in Cincinnati, which he had never been to, which is actually uh, one of the first cemeteries in the city of Cincinnati, one of the first three and one of the oldest. So it was interesting to uh, re-experience some history there with him, and there also had been some new additions and upgrades. If you haven't been there and you're from the Cincinnati area, you definitely need to go there. It's right across the street in Lunkin Airport. Now for 6-6-2020, we headed south to the Moonbow. Yes, you heard what I said, the Moonbow. For those of you that don't know, in southern Kentucky, there is the Cumberland River and there is the Cumberland Falls. A couple of times a year, well, actually, whenever there's a full moon and the situations are right, you can see what is a rainbow at night. Now, it's not colors, but it's like white and it looks like a rainbow, but it's white. It's strange. Anyway, we went there. 
and we actually captured a couple of cemeteries along the way. Camp Nelson, Lancaster, and then there was a military cemetery, Donald Randall uh, Memorial Cemetery. That was a pretty cool place, and it was a nice place to end our day. Another place that we went to in June was the uh, College Corner Cemetery. We had been there before, but this was one of those shoots that was nice. We were in the area and the sun was setting. It's the only reason we went there. And as you see, some of the pictures from this shoot turned out amazing. It was the kind of sunset a cemetery photographer begs for. And we uh, actually wrapped up uh, June in the first half of the year at one of our favorites, almost where we started the beginning of the year, at Spring Grove. We were again chasing down famous cemetery, uh, famous graves in the cemetery, and we came across uh, several famous graves, particularly a few that were very important to the Cincinnati area, but a few that are actually significant nationally.